Welcome to the Resilience in Leadership Podcast. I am Coach Anda Goseco. And I am Ian Santos. In each episode, we share our story and interview world-class Filipino leaders who are among the best in the world and who deserve a spotlight for all their courage and perseverance to greatness. Our goal is to recognize outstanding Filipino leaders who exemplify leadership traits worth emulating. Start a movement to enhance and elevate leadership capabilities in the country. Create a community that helps each other become better leaders. And inspire other leaders to elevate their game through integrity, malasakit, courage, inspiration, and resilience. As we strive to become that great one, We have to fuel our spirit with these inspiring, resilient, and courageous Filipino leaders that we have today. So if you are someone who leads a great workplace and engages employees, loves to achieve great results, or simply someone who aims to succeed as a leader, this this podcast podcast is is for you. you. Now Now let's let's get get to to the the show. show. Let's give uh, Dean Pax a round of applause, everyone. A virtual round of applause, if you may. Dean. I hope, I hope uh, I have inspired and perspired. <laughs> uh, I'm just giving you reality, guys. So I'm both, uh, Ian knows I'm both mentor and tormentor. So <laughs> I've made this quiz a bit. Uh, there's a little bit of fear, but those are the realities. But you have to move on and realize that if you're a business leader, an entrepreneur or intrapreneur, you have to move on from resilience to recovery and to rebuild with a team. With a team. Galen, right? Dean. Uh, and Dean. I hope I hope I have given you uh, uh, how do you call that? Uh, it was worth the first ever podcast live and the first ever presentation live. So uh, and I think we have up the level and remember to our listeners uh in the resilience and leadership this is a level up so it's not a webinar it is a business leader session that anda and ian have organized very very successfully maraming maraming salamat thank, thank you, you dean so um, yeah. uh yeah. i don't know if the uh, go ahead anda you want to say something now I was just gonna say we we have a few questions to Yep, uh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But before before I go to the question, I just hope that our listeners and viewers realize that uh, Dean try, Dean Pax tried to squeeze into one hour a uh, probably a full day or two days. Uh, 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 half, so, uh, half, uh, uh, this is the half day because the half day, half oh. day is all about resilience. Yeah. The second half day is all about strategy for growth. So that's how that's how I craft the. If you're really serious about strategic realignment, you first need to know the foundation before going into the strategy. Right. No, so we're so very maybe fortunate. maybe that's what we can do uh, as my gift to Virginia to Virgie. So yes, uh, we can organize that maybe during the summer or uh, after yeah. summer na siguro, uh, yeah. when we yeah. can see things more clearly after the first half of the year, right? Yep, that, that would be great, Dean. Um, this is so rich in terms of the discussion and learnings, no? Sa tingin ko, this might be a two or three podcast episode. And uh, I don't think we can fit this into one <laughs> podcast. But pa, this is great, pa, no? Pa, uh, pa, 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 na kasi, uh, yeah. when I promise, when I promise to give a friend, so bigay todo. When I promise oh. to give Ian my time, bigay todo tayo. Bigay todo oh. talaga. I mean, for and, being so and, generous. Yeah. And I, I I believe that uh, uh, I have blessed all your connections and the people listening here. And uh, like it may, maybe yeah, no, dalawang dalawang session yung podcast. Uh, and uh, uh, it's my privilege. Uh, Nakinala mo kung masaya ako, parang excited ta ako magtuloy. <laughs> no, we're, we're very grateful, Dean. And alam ka naman, you're always high energy and uh, full of wisdom, no. Uh, ano, ano, matan, just, matanda na lolo mo, semi-retired na, 65. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't show in your energy, Dean, at all. Thank so you, anyway, thank you, thank you. So anyway, Dean, you know, I always see you as this very successful, <laughs> and people see you as this very successful uh, person with a very good corporate career, very successful businesses, uh, 
best-selling books. No? So we sort of see the tip of the iceberg as Dean Pax Lapid. Now, I wanted to ask a personal question. No? Is there yeah. any personal resilience story that you want to share with us as part of this podcast? Kahit one lang. In your, I'm sure your successes were born out of a lot of struggle uh, and resilience yeah. in your life. Yeah, uh, I, I guess the, the most challenging, or first, uh, it's most challenging because it was the, it was really the first and it really affected the family when Tatay died at 32 years old of cirrhosis mm -hmm. cancer. So mm -hmm. cirrhosis right. of the liver. And, and we were just growing up. I was just entering grade five. And mommy didn't know how to run the meat business. So... She was struggling on the business, but at the same time, struggling to take care of six children, all small. Our youngest was one and a half, so it was incumbent upon the three eldest, Kuya, who retired the uh, president of BDO leasing, me, and then my sister, who's IT manager in, uh, in uh, Vancouver right now. So we were tasked to take care of each of our other siblings. Mamimili kami. So, kuya took care of the number four. I took care of the number five. And of course, my number three took care of the number six. Tiki isa kami, para kaming Batman and Robin. So, having said that, we were never rich, but we were never poor. But we were struggling. Both in the family emotion and in... Uh, uh, finances. And what mommy said lang, to support her and take care each and every one of us amongst ourselves because she was 4 a.m. to 7 p.m. in the market. There are only two things that my mom said and this is what carried me. How they had overcome. One was the assurance that she said, I will do everything that I can to give each and every one of you a decent life and a decent education. Itatawid ko kayo kahit ipangutang ko or kahit magdamagan ako sa palengke, maitawid ko lang kayo sa kabuhayan at sa inyong pag-aaral. Kaya wag niyong iwaldas ang inyong pag-aaral. So what happened? Education was very valuable to me. So I, my kuya graduated sa Lutatorian in elementary to become 50% discount in high school. I took that challenge, pressure. So I ended up valedictorian, 100% scholar in high school. Wow. And then we all ended up in UP, 325 pesos per semester. So sabi nga ng nanay ko, abay wala akong gasto. So four of us are UP. Uh, yung isa, di lubusot sa UP. Uh, DLSU. <laughs> so, dilusot sa UP. Oh, yung isa, uh, UP sana tayo, UST. So, four of us were UP, one was UST, the other one was DLSU. So, that was one. So, And we moved from Quiapo to New Manila and we moved, so, yun yung yun para bang na-elevate kami into the success of my mom and we moved from Retiro, LSQC, to UP kami. So, the other bit, that was assurance. But there was a call to action. Is the, the, This is where resilience comes in. Facing the challenges, but mom will always bite my ear. Para sa NLP, meron kang kinesthetic anchor. She will bite my Even if I'm thinking or in pressure, I always touch my left ear because that's what my mom will always bite. Eh. Sabi mm -hmm. niya, Pax, may talino ka at may sipag ka, gamitin mo. Very, very valuable wisdom from my mom. That's why I love a little bit uh, teary-eyed. She's now 90. Sabi nga, whatever she wants, I will give her. So all my travels abroad when I was Shishel, she was part of my travel because I knew her hardship, how resilient she was, and then the vision of making sure and the commitment that itatawid niya anim na maliliit. And then the last and I always say that because Lola was Spanish. Her word has always been so. My 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 grandmother wanted me to become a priest. So there's a bishop in the house now. My uncle naman wanted to be in, in the navy. So I uncovered the word. Sabi lang ni mami, 
be who whatever you wanna be for as long as that will lead you to happiness and satisfaction. And in the word which I said earlier, una vida con miedo es como la vida medias. A life lived in fear is a life half lived. I hope that ends that question with a bang, di ba? In Spanish, what? una vida con miedo. And that is ingrained in all of us. Una vida con miedo. At sarap pakinggan, ano? Una vida con miedo es como la vida medias. A life lived in fear is a life half lived. So brothers and sisters, listening. Whatever crisis, whatever administration, don't have the fear. Move on. Use your capability with God's grace and mercy. You will do okay. I always believe that. Wonderful and inspiring story, Dean. <laughs> Salamat. Uh, Anda, I think you have a question for Dean. Anda! Yeah. yeah, well, I wanted to say it was really inspiring to hear that your mom inspired you. Yes! Yeah, I love that story yep. and the, the quotes and the things that your mom was saying about the commitment to be yep. able to, to, to mm -hmm. make that vision happen. I think that's very important. Um, I also want to say what I really liked about um, everything you said so far. It's about really understanding the environment around us. And adjusting yeah. and recalibrating and unlearning and relearning and all of that to be able to um, manage the complexities around us. And, and you know, it's 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 kind of I mean, like these are really interesting concepts, but sometimes difficult to do, right? Yeah. So especially if you're thinking about I want to be more in the growth zone, but some people mm -hmm. have challenges mm -hmm. with that. So I want to know how do you build those habits? So if there's an intention to want to be that, to be everything that we heard from you today. How do you now make it into a habit that it becomes a part of you and it changes who you are also in a good way? I mean, it makes you become a better person. It changes your mindset. Mm -hmm. So what are some habits or some tips on how to create those habits? Ah, okay. So uh, maybe I'll, uh, in, my, in my last best, in my fifth bestseller, uh, I... I realigned, of course, you, you're familiar about Ikigai, right? The, the ikigai. Japanese, mm -hmm. yeah, the Ikigai. Yes. But there are four, yeah. I think there are four leaves there, which is more complicated, uh, the vocation, the mission, the profession. So I just integrated passion, profession, and purpose. But that was coming from when I was doing my OD, PhD OD, I realized and uh, in, in master's, the discipline that you're taking, you do the application. In uh, in PhD, the principles and all the theories out there, you craft it into your own. And then you prove it. So that's the journey of a PhD candidate. So part of all this behavior change. So imagine, I mean, to answer your question, I put it in a simple framework of the small circle is the identity. Who I am. The next circle is about your purpose, value, and beliefs. So why am I here for and what is important to me? And the outer circle is really the behavior. What am I doing? You have to be clear on who you are. If you see my, my uh, LinkedIn post, the difference between a human being and a human doing. So the being is the one in the identity that is surrounded by your purpose, your value, and your belief. Mm. If your belief is that whatever happens, makakaraos tayo. And that's what my mom was saying. May awa ang Diyos, but ikaw rin ang gagawa. I, I, I should have, maybe I should write all the quotations of my mom. Yeah. May awa... Ano simple, di ba? Mommy never went into college. Up to uh, Portugal siya sa Holy Spirit. Tapos nangongopia. Sabi ko, para pala ako ikaw, kinukop nangongopia. <laughs> na four and a half engineering. But of course, that's all. So, may awa ang Diyos, and that's your belief, but kailangan ikaw ay gumawa. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we've always said that with Bo, God will give you the ability to create your wealth. God will not give you your wealth, but He will give you the ability. So you have to use it or you lose it. So, so to answer your question, behavior, or you want to change that, 
are action or reaction. It will always be a function of your belief and values triggered by an outside force or an external environment. Hmm. If ability and competence, on the other hand, again, behavior. So if behavior is a function of your beliefs and values, it is also a function of your capability and competence needed for a particular challenge at the moment. Kaya either you feel incompetent or you feel bored because you're so competent but the challenge is not there. So, and, and that is Mikhail, uh, I, I can pronounce it, Czechoslovakian. It's the concept yeah. of flow. Flo, it's the flo, concept right? of flow. Yeah, oh, it's flo. Mikhail. Yeah. Don't ask me to spell it. But, uh, I am poor in spelling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's, I, I think uh, behavior, I think, is, I mean, what is the psychological side? But I love the concept of behavior change in OD. I love the concept of behavior change in OD. So, Ah, uh, may meron ako dito, Dr. Romy Paredes, my yeah, okay. uh, men, my, men, my mentee turns mentor. <laughs> yeah. Inside of the difference with compulsive growth and conscious growth. So, ah, that's easy. Compulsive growth is uh, all about reaction para bang pinagdaanan mo na, yun lang gagawin mo. But conscious growth is really direct its goal and focus directed ka. Conscious ka. Sa so, ano yan? Is a uh, ang mahirap kasi sometimes in compulsive growth is you're used to doing it. Maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. But conscious growth is you know where you're getting into or what you're getting into. Just like when, when I was in corporate, I thought I wanted to become in the executive board of Shell. I realized <laughs> after a while, Wow, you will retire in corporate, but you will not retire as a father. So the more important thing, you balance between father and executive. Maybe you can do both, but after a while, it eats up. And I've said to myself, I've never seen my three boys grow as toddlers. I already see them as teenagers. So, I prayed hard. I mean, this is discernment. Just when I was getting promoted as vice president from GM, I retired. Sabi la, Pax, you're crazy. You're insane. You're being promoted vice president. You're retiring. You're taking early retirement. Sabi ko, yeah. What will you do? Take care of my sons. They thought I was crazy. But now, look, my youngest, is a PhD in physical te te therapy uh, in Arcadia in Philadelphia at 27 years old. Now he works, he works now for New York company, Medris. My two sons, Francis is the operations director, I've given that term to him of IT SPAC. Franklin manages the family investment. So I can retire. I they say you're early to retirement again, Din Paksa. I am, but I want I've never played with my kids. Now I'm playing with my grandkids. So again, it's about values and belief. What matters to you most? So I challenge the executive, you have to balance. But of course, in my book, Happy Retiree, there's such a thing as a starting a starting zone or starting period there's an accumulation and there's a growing and there's a harvesting so by the time you're 55 and you're still struggling to accumulate then something went wrong something went wrong so i i have that i have a grid that balances if you're this and that this sh should be your earning power I, I I should I should probably post that in LinkedIn one of these days just to give you my nuggets of wisdom. But I paid you know I paid five thousand ringgit to get that chart from uh, Malaysia when I was in Kuala Lumpur because I already had the plan that after Kuala Lumpur I would retire because I was enjoying the family so much. I said, 
no amount of VP position can exchange for the happiness and the fulfillment of a father. So, so did you make president? Sabi ko, yes. I became president of Shell Retirees Club. I also became president of Shell Bowling Club. So, I became president of Shell twice. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, Dean, <laughs> yeah. it's been it's been so much of a pleasure having you uh, tonight. I know we went over time, but parang kulang parin. I, 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 uh, so we, when we went over time, so I hope you now see what you will be getting into if we do yeah. and organize something for Virgie, di ba? Uh, yeah. so and uh, I think maybe. You have maybe three, three, four speakers. I mean, that will be a great event. Hmm. Uh, right. So up to you. I, I just want to, I don't know her personally. So I, I wanted to attend her seminar. So I was waiting 30 minutes. That was the day that she was rushed to the emergency room. Pala. So right. I was excited. Right? And then right. next thing I knew, and then but uh, uh, the call to action. So... I think the big I've done this before, uh, fundraising with Anna Wim, fundraising with the ministries of Brother Bo. Uh, use my time and talent to create pressure uh, to do and help uh, our friend Virginia. Mm -hmm. Thank and you I'm so much. more than happy, more than happy to be part of that event again. I mean, so, uh, these so are the much, things. Uh, medyo, pag lolo mo, medyo nalulu, ha? So I'm a little bit <laughs> emotional. I'd rather be on the giving side rather than on the receiving side. Mar maraming salamat, Dean. And uh, we don't have time to read all the comments, but you can review it on the LinkedIn page on the top 30s. People are saying a lot of uh, thank you. They're very grateful for uh, all your teachings tonight. Uh, and I don't know if you wanted to say anything to Dean before we go. Yeah, well, I just wanted to thank you for sharing us with, with us your knowledge, your time, your wisdom. From the again, from the chat, there have been so many so many comments there on how you've you're able to already help people with just this short um, short session that we had together. And um, I'd like to thank everyone also for attending. And I hope that whatever you learned today, you put it into practice to make yep. sure that to make the changes happen. And what were you saying earlier? We're talking about an extraordinary. <laughs> 2022 so we're nearing the half of 2022 so that's our challenge to all of you so if you can create that extraordinary 2022 and not just 2022 2022 2022 and beyond so thank you for leaving that with us dean encouraging yes. us and challenging us to to be extraordinary yep yep thank, everybody thank so can much. be extraordinary it's just it's just the extra in the ordinary or the ordinary being done extraordinary so I, I think a play, a play of words. So uh, it's both a learning and an inspiration. Kaya inspiration, instruction, and then integration. So that's how I conduct my uh, business leader session. And looking forward. So uh, I'm just uh, alam naman ni ano, uh, a text away. Alam naman ni, ni Ian yan. And uh, again. Uh, connect with me on uh, LinkedIn and I and request I will be more than happy to share the deck uh, for you to discuss it with your team. Uh, I would love you to spread the word that there's really hope, diba? You can cope and there is hope, diba? Uh, in COVID, I tell them we are covered by God. On, on, on that note, Dean, as uh, Anda and I would uh, usually close our podcast, always remember to be resilient. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time tonight. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for listening. listening. If you enjoy and find value in this episode, share this with a friend, leave us a rate or review on Apple Podcasts. And make sure to subscribe to get notified of our next episode. Talk to you next time. Remember to always stay resilient.